So here's the situation. My wife got this mirror Ikea thing uh, for free off of a Facebook giveaway and when we went to pick it up the people had put it outside and it was raining and it's made a particle board which means it's damaged up here. That's the first problem. The second problem is we want to use this to make a door. My, my son wants this as a closet door, one of those sliding barn style closet doors and big as it is it's not tall enough. It's barely wide enough, but it's not tall enough. So I need to add like about eight inches of height to it. And I've got basically two ideas, um, but I'm not gonna find out which idea is gonna work until I take it apart. Now, you already know, because it's gonna be in the title of the video, is this going to be, you know, making a closet door out of an Ikea mirror, or is this going to be fixing an Ikea mirror. We'll see. This is the part that was on the ground and it's, as you can see, it's loose and it's separated here. Now it's just clamped together because this is Ikea, it's all knocked down. And down here you can see how the particle board is bulging and sticking out. And here I've turned it around, this is the back side of that same corner. You can see all along here where the particle board is swelled up. Just for interest, these are the bolts, how it's bolted together, and this is a, a plate for hanging it on the wall. This, I'm going to peel off this veneer, see what's underneath. Yeah, it's like a, doesn't look like it's been glued in too many spots. I can just see a little divot there where it's holding on, but everything else is peeling off. Yeah, look at that. Fascinating. It's heavy, but I guess it wasn't that heavy. Yeah. And here's the damage. Oh. Yeah. I'm thinking plan one where I just sort of tear it apart and take the mirror out is probably the way to go. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and then see about taking it apart. And so I'm left with a piece of mirror and a backer board. These are a quarter inch thick and in the, in the, in the frame there's a slot that was 5 16 thick that the mirror fits into. So I, I need to replicate that in whatever it is I build. And yeah, the repair option is off the table so it's time. to start again. So it's several days later now, and I have a plan, I know what I'm gonna do. It took me a while to decide, because like in many things in woodworking, there's more than one way to do it. And basically, I figured that the approach that I'm gonna take is to make a hollow core door. Because you know, hollow core doors have these thin skins and they got all the little bits in between, which is kind of like a torsion box, because I thought about making this out of plywood or hardwood and um, you know it's 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 a big door and I don't <laughs> don't want it to move and you know if you've been to the building the big box store lately you know you pick up plywood and you see it's often you know like this or a, it can very easily pretzel and you, you can do things to, to fight against that but anyways and for those who don't know a torsion box is typically when you have two th sheets of thin plywood and then you have like a, a grid of lumber that is glued to both and you put them together and the result is very light and very flat and it's the flat that I want. I want something that's gonna stay flat. So here are my plans. I got three views of what I'm looking for. This is basically the end result. You know, I want a, a framed mirror, but I want the mirror recessed and uh, you know, I'm worried about, you know, it's glass. What if it breaks? So I want to have a way to repair it. And uh, so I don't want it to build in permanently. And um, what I've decided to do is I'm going to make it back 38, by 82, I'm going to attach the grid onto that, and then I'm going to attach a front, and then this part is going to be recessed, and I can fit the mirror into that, and I'll use some little battens to hold it in place. I had this piece of quarter inch plywood, and I had them cut a foot off the end so that I could take it home in my van, and now I need to cut it down to uh, 38, and so I need to take, I need to take 10 inches off, 
But I don't have a 38 inch rift capacity on my saw, which means I need to take 9 and 7 eighths off. That went pretty smooth. It was really floppy, but had it nicely against the fence. Now I need to cross cut it to length. Yeah, I don't have one of those nice uh, Festool track saws. But when it came to uh, cross cutting the uh, eight inch strips, I still use the table saw. You can make it work. Okay, I've got the back cut to size and I've got the, the side panels cut to size and now I need to cut some filler. Now if you add these two pieces together, it's sort of a little bit over three eighths of an inch thick. Now the door hardware I ordered can handle doors from inch and three eighths to inch and five eighths, you know, your, your standard passage set door. So I'm, I'm aiming at an inch and a half. So since that's a little over three eighths, I need to cut some filler wood that's about an inch and an eighth thick. And what I'm planning to do is I've got some hardwood that I've got a nice long straight strip and I'm gonna rip some hardwood to an inch and an eighth and I want that to be the, the outer edge of the door, the mirror, the mirror door that I'm making. And I picked up a, a cheap pine board and I'm gonna rip that down for the in blocks, the, the blocks that fill in the inside of the door. So this door that I'm building is going to be 38 by 82 and I don't have a bench that big. Luckily I still have this tabletop. Uh, I found this on the side of the road a couple of months ago. It's been in my garage. I've already used it once as a temporary table. And it is just about the exact right size. And I almost thought about just making the mirror door out of that, but it is solid oak or ash or something and it weighs a lot and I'm looking for something thinner, but this will give me a nice flat surface to assemble the table. This is the inside face of the back and I'm using a combination square to, I'm marking the outline of what's going to be the mirror cavity, if you will. And these are the two edge pieces. On these pieces, I took care to make sure I'm orienting the grain vertically. I wanted to resist any urge to bend or flex. I think I've said before, this is gonna be painted, so I'm just going to slather on the glue, not worrying about drips or anything. What I want is a nice, nice strong connection and I want a nice flat connection. And then do the same on the other side, and then I will clamp it up. Okay, with the outside frame done, I need to work on the inner parts, and I've already done the one that uh, gave me a chance to sort of sort out the method I wanted to use here. I have a piece cut that fits in, and I'll just need to be able to flex it into place, but part of the trick is, is that it's eight inches inside. I'll be using some deep clamps to clamp it and uh, some other creative clamping issues and I'm going to clamp it I'll just be clamping it along the table here so that gives me something to clamp it to okay this might be difficult to film because once I get going it's going to be tough so I think I'm going to bring the camera in closer and we'll just have it focus on a section And now that I've got the main part of the frame in, I need to proceed with filling it in. And you know, the rest of the procedure is not gonna be that interesting because it's just gonna be repeated, putting small pieces in between here. The framework is all glued in now and I am ready to put on the, uh, the front skin. Two, a uh, couple of little things I wanted to mention like, 
Down here I doubled up the boards and at the top I doubled up the boards also and that's simply because here is where the one strip is going to cover and then I need a place for the adjoining panel to fit. The whole door is going to have the look of a frame and panel door where these will be the rails and these will be the styles or maybe I get the terminology mixed up but I know it's going to be painted but you'll still be able to tell that there will be separate pieces. Up here at the top of the door and on this side of the door also I filled in with blocking so that it's solid here because this is where the um, the hanging hardware is going to be bolted through the door so I needed to make sure that that got in there before it was covered up. And finally I was a little worried that these ribs weren't close enough but when I lay the piece on it doesn't flex at all. I mean, this is actually fairly thick. Most, most doors have really really thin door skins on them but this is nice and solid and of course it's going to be hanging so it's not going to be an issue. getting a few pins in place and then I'm going to get the clamps going. At the top and the bottom we got these two pieces coming together and there's no hiding this joint and what I then like to do is I just sand a bevel here and make makes a little shadow line. It's subtle but I think it, it improves the look. Just gives you a little bit of visual interest that you don't even realize you're looking at. So apparently I've succeeded in making a hollow core door. Now of course not too many hollow core doors have a recess like that so next step for me is uh, sanding it down and getting it painted and I'm gonna skip over that and we'll come back to it when we're ready to get the mirror installed and see about hanging it up. So it's several days later now and I got it painted and it turned out that the painting was actually a real challenge. Uh, in hindsight I really should not have used this underlay plywood for this skin. I should have you know splurged for some actual quarter inch plywood or something. I don't know. Um, the main problem is there is a number of voids in the plywood that were hidden until I got the, the uh, primer on and then the the water in the primer it, it just it rippled the, the veneer was so thin and I'm like what's this and I and I picked at it it just ripped right through the veneer and there I found you know there were two or three spots here can't see it now but I had to patch and prime and you know wood fill and there was a few spots where it, it, it looks almost like cut lines because of the, the veneer rippled when uh, when it got damp uh, anyways it's done now um, I cut some thin battens and I had them painted and they're already fitted so once the mirror is in I'm gonna I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do is put a backing of cardboard so there's a little bit of give there then the mirror will go in and then these battens these will, these will get fitted into place and they'll be screwed in and it, they'll be pinching the mirror against the back and that's how the mirror is gonna be held in place so the next thing to do is get the uh, sliding hardware mounted on the closet and then we can get the door hung. So I almost skipped this but so many people say they like it when I show mistakes and honesty compels you to tell you that I made kind of a major mistake when I was building it. If this is going to be a sliding door and the sliding door there's a little guide that you put on the floor that the door slides over and I should have cut a slot in the bottom of the door before I built the door. Like when I just had this little piece of wood I could have run it over the table saw and I start looking at the instructions now that I'm ready to hang the door and I'm like oh shoot I didn't put a slot in the door. How do you take you know a seven foot door and stand it up on a table saw? And I started thinking what I had and I like you could maybe do it with a slot cutting bit on a router. I don't have one. What I had is a biscuit joiner and uh, let me bring the camera in. So when you plunge the biscuit joiner your blade sticks out and I I set the adjustment over here so the blade would go as, as deep as possible and that's just about enough for the slot that I need. And I didn't want to scratch up my paint job so I, I didn't I didn't want to use I didn't want to be sliding it along the fence. So instead I got a piece of plywood that was about the right thickness and then I set it against here 
and then I plunged it in, and I moved it along and plunged it in and moved it along and plunged it in and moved it along and then, and when I was mostly done, I started at one end and plunged it in and then I slid it along to make sure that it was totally cleaned out. And it worked, but it was a little nerve wracking and it was a pain in the neck. So if you make a door like this, make sure you cut the slot first before you build it. So that's the me in the mirror. This is the real me. Cut the mirror in. And now I got these slats where I've drilled some holes and these are the screws that I painted. And uh, we're just going to use a bit of friction of these slats to hold the mirror in place. And And with the mirror installed, that pretty much brings us to the end of this project. All that's remaining is to get this hung up in my son's room, and there it is installed. I bought the hardware kit off of Amazon. Uh, you know, these sorts of doors are pretty popular right now, so it's easy to find. The one thing that you really want to be sure of is that you get this track mounted absolutely dead level. We had to finesse ours a bit, but I think I've got it dialed in now. You got these great big wheels that roll really, really well, and uh, if the track isn't perfectly level, well, they'll just roll downhill. But anyways, there it is. It looks great. My son's happy, and that about wraps up this project. As always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. If you feel I've earned it, please consider subscribing. And if you really like what I've done, maybe you could stop on by Patreon and support us there, and it'd be really appreciated. And we'll see you next time. I forget what I was going to say next.